Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, so glad you're here with us today. We're in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 14. Yeah, we're coming up on the keys of the kingdom, the church. We're in lesson 48, excuse me, 43. Listen to our other 42 lessons on the book of Matthew. Also, Genesis, Proverbs, and Romans. We're done with Romans. And uh, just join us daily. So let's get started verse by verse. Going to be going through it. This is very foundational and key. A lot of misinterpretations here that have dramatic impacts on people's uh, eternity, really. So verse 14. So he's like, who, who do people say I, the Son of Man, am? Verse 14, chapter 16. Again, thanks for being here with us. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, that's Elijah. Just remember the Jah, like the A-H in Elijah, is a A-S in Greek. So you say Isaiah, it's Isaiah, okay? Easy way to remember that. And others, Jeremiah, which is Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. It's, it's so interesting to me. I could see how people could say he's Elijah, but Jeremiah, well, the weeping prophet, okay, maybe. He's talking about destruction coming. And uh, so verse 15, And he saith to them, But whom say ye, my disciples, whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter, that one that just is given to outburst. And so now notice he made a lot of mistakes, a lot, got rebuked by Jesus. But he's also the guy Jesus gave the keys to. There's something there. There's something about those people that will just go forward. And Simon Peter answers out, Thou art the Christ, you are Messiah, you're the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. You're the Messiah, the Son of the living God. You're God incarnate. That's what he's saying. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, son of Jonah. So we know what his dad's name was, was Jonah. Some would say maybe that's a, a moniker given to him that maybe he's from uh, related to Jonah several hundred years previous. Maybe like Jonah, he's going to go through three days of terrible things or preach and not want to like um, Jonah preached to the Gentiles and he really wanted the Gentiles to die <laughs> and they were converted that maybe uh, Peter, you know, apostle to the Jews, but he preached to the Gentiles and the Gentiles received the gospel. I, I, think, I, I think that's reading too much into it. I think it's just talking about that's his dad. But there's all kinds of rampant speculation on that. For flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Now notice the Father is omnipotent. So Jesus said, the Father's in me, okay? He says this in John 14, the Father in me doeth the work, the Father speaks. So he was all the fullness of the Godhead dwelt in Jesus bodily. He's the Father in flesh. The Father was also in heaven. And this is how he also spoke from heaven. People say, was God a ventriloquist? I think of many dumb statements I've heard some apologists make that could be the dumbest. It's God of intrusion. No, he's, it's called omnipotence, omnipresence, real just nice theological terms that everybody kind of believes about God or should because the Bible teaches it. It's like because you're talking about just limiting God, you're saying because like I'm Pentecostal, I believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I, I couldn't believe people can speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gives the utterance all around the world simultaneously. And that God couldn't still be on the throne talking to angels. Of course, God's God. He's way bigger than your mind and way bigger than mine. Because he said he is. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. As the heavens are high above the earth, so are his ways above our ways. His thoughts above our thoughts. So, that's just... Mm. But my Father which is in heaven, and I say unto thee, now notice the beauty of the King James is seen in the thee, thou, ye, you. Thee is singular, ye and you is plural. Thee, thou is singular. And that's what it is in Hebrew and Greek. So that's what makes it so very accurate. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, rock. And upon this rock, 
Notice he doesn't say upon you, but upon this rock, what rock? That which was revealed from heaven. So now Peter did not come to this conclusion of himself. God revealed it from heaven. This is why some people say there has to be a revelation of an understanding of God. So it came from heaven. And, but the revelation that he's the Christ, the son of the living God. He's the Messiah, God in flesh. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, that revelation... I will build my church that Jesus is the Messiah and he's God in flesh. He's the son of living God and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, we tend to think of the gates of hell like moving against the church. That's not what's happening. That is a total misunderstanding. And there's a whole teaching in the Old Testament of the seed of Messiah is going to possess the gate of its enemies. We're the seed of Abraham. Galatians 3 and we possess the gate so the gates of hell can't prevail against us hell has people locked up people are going to hell all it takes to be born and sin once you're on your way to hell we have the keys to the kingdom Acts 2.38 read William Tyndale's uh, about the Christian disciplines of a Christian man we've got the keys the wonderful keys to the kingdom that we can pull people out of hell. They're delivered from the kingdom of darkness, translated into the kingdom of his dear son. And also, you know, people in the underworld in paradise, Luke 16, he took captivity captive in all this. So the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So everybody that receives the gospel and applies the gospel gets saved. Gates of hell can't hold them back. The gates of hell are open. You have the keys to the gates of hell. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. So you open the gates of hell and open the gates of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So bind on earth the gates of hell the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church and uh, this probably deserves its own lesson because there's so much here whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven bound in heaven how's it bound in heaven whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven so some people say like, okay, the Jews received the gospel that Peter's preaching in Acts 2. The Samaritans, when Peter and John went down, received the Holy Ghost in Acts 8. And then the Gentiles received it in Acts 10. That they was bound in heaven till Peter loosed it and opened the doors to these groups. Interesting thoughts. But Peter had the key. So he's going to be the one, the one that rejects Jesus that gets up on the day of Pentecost. That's the reason I say this is so important. But notice the church. Some people say, well, the church is blah, blah, blah. I'll build my church. And what is all this junk about you're the church, you don't need to gather together? Have you ever heard of epistles? Epistles were written to be read when the whole church comes together. The Bible says, don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. Where did this nonsense come from? I understand that each individual is the church. The church also is a, a corporate whole that you come to the angel of the church in Ephesus. The church. It's when they came together. That's when it was read. It's so obvious. The gifts of the Spirit. It's when they were all gathered together. How is it when you all come together that... Please, don't be an American Christian. Just be a Christian. Don't get called up with these currents of the world that are just nonsense, junk. And probably stronger language is deserved. Verse 20, Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. So they're like, he is the Messiah. And he's like, no, don't tell anybody. Not yet. Verse 21, Pilcrow, flag, means different thought. Paragraph. From that time forth, Jesus 
began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised and be raised again the third day. Remember, he said he was going to raise his own body from the dead. John 2, John 10. Which that was the father that did that. Galatians 1.1. 1, 1, among so many others. I did a video years ago on the oneness of God in the resurrection. Because it, it shows it incontrovertibly. There's just no doubt. But our eyes are blinded. 2 Corinthians chapters 3 and 4. We got to get scaled. Then Peter, he's got the keys. What am I going to do with these keys? Took him and began to rebuke him. Hey, I got rebuke. You said I had a revelation from heaven. I'm rebuking you. Saying, be it far from thee, Lord Jehovah. This shall not be unto thee. So, I mean, Peter's kind of feeling his Wheaties. He's got the keys. He's been lauded in front of all the disciples and everything. He's like, hey, Jesus. Now watch it. No, no, Jesus. You, you're not going to die. You're the Messiah. You're coming to conquer the Romans. Verse 23. But he turned and said unto Peter. Now he said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. So could you imagine you entrust the fate of all of eternity a bride throughout all eternity, you give it to the guy the keys, and just a little bit later you're having to call him Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. Not a fence, but an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. You're not thinking the way God wants you to think. Verse 24, Then said Jesus, Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Verse 25, still great advice here, Christian living, not just advice. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever loses life for my sake shall find it. I will abandon it all for the sake of the call. If you've never heard that song, it's phenomenal. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Nothing. Verse 25. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father, because the Father is in him and surrounds him, and with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verse 28 kind of goes along, at least some people think, with chapter 17, so we're going to stop here. Thanks for being here with us. Put it on social media. And thanks for uh, joining us. Thank you for your prayers. And share with uh, your friends, family, church family. And uh, listen to our other videos. Join us daily. God bless you. Bye.